Greetings and salutations, my fellow Fantasy Grounds fans. I'm Doug Davison, president of SmiteWorks, and I'm here to show you guys a sneak preview of upcoming features in version 4.8 of Fantasy Grounds. Uh, you can test these features out yourself in the test channel for Fantasy Grounds. Everyone has access to that. Just go into your settings and on the advanced tab, switch over to the test channel, run an update, and then you'll be off in the test channel. Uh, notice that everything that you have, your campaigns and so forth, will all be moved over and limited to the test channel. So when you switch back to live, you'll be back to where you started beforehand. And uh, you can easily toggle back and forth between those two, just run an update in between each one. And you can test out what I'm running here today as well. Uh, we'll have a post on the forum under the laboratory channel and it will be listed as version 4.8. So if you have any issues or feedback or you just want to share your thoughts, if there's something that you really like about this new update, let us know directly on the forums. You can also let us on, on Discord, but the forums are definitely nice because it persists and it's easier for us to kind of track after the fact. So I'm going to show you two major things we worked on. One of those is the dice and the other one is going to be the reference manual. So we'll start off with the dice. There's been a whole host of changes that have been implemented here, uh, mostly with uh, Josh Utter, our developer that's done a lot of these great functionality and features on the dice, Adam Bradford, who has done uh, just Yeoman's work on the uh, redesign of the windows and on the dice uh, themselves, and, uh, and John to help kind of do all the integration like he always does. So. Without further ado, I'm going to show you this new window that comes up is no longer going to show automatically all the, the different dice, but you'll see that it shows you your active dice here at the top. So if you forget which one it is or if someone says, hey, I really like that dice, what is it? You can let them know which one it is. It's the hero dice. This is the pack that it's from. And then the name is Barbarian with FX. Uh, you also see a color section, which will make more sense if I switch to a dice that has two different colors. So here I've now switched my default. I'm using the default dice and you'll see that it's colorable. So uh, this is just like before. You'll notice that this window looks a little bit nicer than it did previously, but now I can switch uh, those things off. And um, yeah, looks a little bit nicer. You still have, like before, you have the dice display. So if I want to hide or show different dice, if I, those don't need to be on my interface for the particular game that I'm running, I can turn, or, turn those on or off. You also have the ability to adjust your size in the tray all the way down to 60, uh, 80, sorry, 80 percent, all the way up to 120 percent. I believe the default is 120. And then there's a new section called roll. And you notice that the, the, new, the new default says 200 percent. So I'm going to demonstrate that. First, I'm going to switch to some other more unique dice here. Uh, and if I pick those up, you'll see the dice are now 200% bigger than what they would be otherwise. Uh, notice that these are 120%. So if I want to make them look truly twice as big, then you notice that as I pick it up, it gets twice as big. Uh, the other thing you'll see is that as I hover over the dice, even without clicking, it'll show you what those dice look like. And then here, the, the main selection is going to be um, displayed automatically. Product tie-ins here. So here you'll see we have the Dragon Queen dice, the Dragon Queen dice with the effects, uh, Blade Lord, Blade effects. And then if you don't have the dice, you'll still be able to demo them, but they'll be grayed out. But you'll be able to still show what they look like. So here's some two upcoming dice that will be released for Stormlight. And you'll see that those look uh, like that. If I want to switch to those dice, I can still just click on it. And now my active dice set is now uh, changed over. And this is where really that, that larger size on rolling is much nicer. The other really cool thing before I dive too deep is that uh, we can now roll anywhere within the system and it'll track those dice. So you notice in the past if I was going to roll those 46, I would have had to basically drop it only in this little targeted chat window section. Now I can literally fling them anywhere on the system, get my nice little effects, and then it'll still record those dice. Uh, if I'm doing damage and stuff like that, I can still drop it on a target and, uh, and do everything that I've done before. But if I uh, have dice and I want to just play around and look at it and I decide I don't want to roll it, I just have to make sure I'm not over top of any targeted item like an NPC or anything like that. And then I just release it and drop it back to the desktop. And you notice it's not going to actually display it in the chat window. But if I was to take this same dice, and fling it, that's actually a dice roll now. So that will show up here like it did before. So remember, uh, dice in the chat window, if let's say this was a damage roll that I had somehow rolled by accident or whatever, uh, I could still come through here and negate the value and then drag it back to the target 
uh, like before. Or if I forget to target something and I wanted to target it, if I roll the dice and it happened to be an attack, I could drag it uh, on a target later on. Uh, but let's go back to this dice window. So you can do this previous next, and I can toggle through all of the, all of the different sets. And again, I can hover over each of those, uh, or I can jump ahead to a specific set. So it makes it easy to determine um, what the dice will look like before you choose which one you're going to do. And then if I am not hovered over something, it shows my normal dice down in the dice tray. So here if I switched back to the antique gold, I can toggle those back and forth or just keep looping through until I find another set that I like. Makes it a lot easier to um, identify and, and change your dice out. There's some other features here as well such as this little uh, randomized dice skin. So if, let's say I'm rolling very poorly and I want to just switch up my dice, this will just automatically pick a new dice uh, that I own and switch me to that. Uh, same thing if I was to switch, let's see if I can grab a colorable dice. I'll just pick here, colorable dice. If I want to do mix and match of colors, I can just toggle those or uh, this works on any colorable dice. So if I go back down to, I believe the artificer has, yeah, so here's one. This is colorable. I can use randomize and I can just change the dice color. So if I like this look and design, but I want to just play around with some different colors, you can see what it'll look like uh, here as I kind of switch through those. Uh, I can adjust this all the way up to 240%. So if I want really big dice, or uh, if I wanted to go really, really small, now I've got itty, 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 itty dice, and I'm flinging everywhere. So that's the, the main changes to the dice screen. You still have your NPC dice, which you can link uh, specific NPCs here. Uh, you can drag and drop the NPC and then drag a, dry, a dice to them. You can still uh, go into, like, say, the combat tracker and, let's say, the Tarrasque. If I wanted the Tarrasque to use a specific dice, I could open up the Tarrasque and then I could drag over and say, so, like, right now he's got Scaly Doom is on. So now if I was to roll an attack, uh, it should automatically switch to Scaly Doom, a very small Scaly Doom. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it 200%. Try that again. All right, so now it shows you that this dice is what's going to be used. Again, if I don't want to roll the dice, if I just picked it up, I can just drop it. If I wanted to do my targeted attack, I could do that just like before and drag and drop it on a target. And now it still says targeted just like before. Notice that the, the damage dice is still going to use whatever my definition is under the damage dice section here. So it was, in this particular case, it happened to be piercing damage, and piercing di damage was set to use a specific type of die uh, that I had previously defined. So there you go. That's uh, the new changes on dice. Next up, I'm going to show the reference manual changes, which are also very, very nice uh, quality of life kind of update. So I'm going to show the Dragon Lance Shadow of the Dragon Queen as an example. Let's dive into Chapter 7. Here you'll see I'm in a... Uh, chapter 7 subchapter called the Siege of Calamon. And here it's got all of these different sections that I could jump around to by clicking on the navigation, just like it's always worked in the past. The big change here is now, uh, if I've got running this chapter, you'll see here I'm on this section, I could just scroll through and you see that as I get to a hasty retreat, it just let me keep reading and the navigation automatically stayed in sync on the side. It just automatically scrolls to the next navigation for you as you're reading and then just stacks them up side by side. Uh, so it makes it real easy to read through an entire section without having to click, click, click on the next thing. You can just use your scroller, scroll bar to, um, and using the mouse wheel in this particular case to kind of loop through here. You still got all the same functionality as before, so you can open up the maps, you can click on things just like before. I could still link directly to just one section if I only wanted this one particular section and I didn't want all of the other previous ones. So you can dive directly into this part of this section here. Day of the Dead Dread is different than Flight of the Dragon Elves. And I could even collapse this and read, read the entire thing uh, here using the scroll bar. 
And then now, instead of having previous and next page, those just take you to an entirely different section, which we'll see here in the case of the Temple Crypts. This would be one map with a couple of different rooms on it. I could turn on the tag and show those to the GM. And I could scroll through and read all of the rooms. It makes it very easy for GM prep because you don't have to click through as much. You can just re pre read all of the upcoming sections. And then when you're ready, when you get to each of these sections, like once they get to S7, you can still click on it. You can still link to everything directly within your map. Has all the same functionality as before, just a lot smoother. Uh, and this was functionality that was uh, a lot of support from our developer, uh, Dominic Morta. And then again, John Gregory with the um, help on integrating it and getting it all working within Fantasy Ground. So those are two pretty major updates. We had another thing that um, we were excited to, to release, but we had to kind of roll, roll that back to a following release. Uh, we'll, we'll leak that out later on, but that's quite cool as well. We hopefully will get out uh, the issues ironed out with that one. Uh, and we've got lots of other cool stuff in the hopper as well, in addition to uh, new content as well. So stay tuned for additional future updates. Uh, please participate with us on the test channel and on the laboratory channel within our forums. And let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care.